Hi, my name is Abhishek. I'm a legal intern at Lexicon Company. So today is my topic is uh, Muslim Law Dower and Right to Maintenance. So before proceeding with the topic, I request you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's click so more for more updates. So let's proceed with the topic. So dower in Muslim family law, it is considered as sum of money or other property which the wife is entitled to receive from the husband in consideration of marriage. So whereas mahar has been compared with the price in a contract of sales because of marriage is a civil contract and sales is a typical contract to which Muslim jurists are account to refer uh, to by way of analogy. So dower is not a consideration proceeding from the husband or the contract of marriage but it is an obligation imposed by law on the husband. So let's talk about the quantum of dower. So the only peculiarity of the Muslim law is that no school of Muslim law fixes the quantum uh, which uh, quantum means uh, amount of dower. Uh, usually a dower is fixed in terms of money, no writing is required. So, though usually a written deed known as mahar, mahar nama is executed at the time of marriage. So let's talk about classification of dower. So dower is classified into two ways, specific dower and proper dower. Specific dower uh, means uh, the, mutual, uh, the mutual agreement between the parties and a proper dower means it uh, also known as customary dower arising out of operation of law. So now let's talk about dower's nature and mode of uh, enforcement. So dower vests is the wife and she can remove, uh, recover it like uh, actionable claims. She has power to assign it. Though in Muslim law, dower is debt but it is the unsecured debt. It being an unsecured debt, wife has to stand in the queue like other creditors of the husband. However, a wife who has her husband's property in her possession has a right to retain it till the time he doesn't pay her dower. So now let's talk about right to retention. So it is the right of Muslim wife to continue to be a possession of her husband's property in those cases where dower has not been paid. It has following implications like she has no right to alienate the property, her right of retention doesn't bar her from filing suit for recovery of her dower debt and a Muslim widow uh, has a full right to take possession of income and profits. So rights of retention is lost uh, uh, in the cases like when it is uh, satisfied that wife has taken the full amount of dower uh, from income and profits of the property on her alienation of the property together with possession on her voluntarily handing over possession to IR. So the Muslim law is uh, silent on the question that whether the right to retention is transferable or in uh, or heritable. So let us talk about maintenance to Muslim women under Muslim Women's Act 1986. The act makes provision for matters connected to therewith and it is apparent that the act now where stipulates that any of the rights available to the Muslim woman at the time of enactment of the act are taken away or abrised. So the act lays down uh, certain uh, things like uh, number one, uh, divorced woman is entitled to have a reasonable and fair provisions and maintenance from her former husband and the husband must do within the period of uh, Idda and his obligations are not confined with the period of Idda. So application pending under section 125 of CRPC should be disposed of under section 7 of the act. So there is no provision which nullifies the uh, order of uh, uh, section 125 CRPC. The act doesn't take away vested rights of the Muslim woman. And the fourth one is all obligation of maintenance and with, uh, with her marriage. So let's talk about maintenance from other relations uh, and work board. Section 4 of Muslim Women's Act 1986 lays down that a Muslim woman is entitled to maintenance from her relative or work board. If wife isn't able to maintain herself uh, and if she has not been able to obtain any fair and reasonable maintenance from her, uh, from her husband, then for moving an application under Section 4, the basic requirement is that she shouldn't have remarried. She is not able to maintain self, uh, self after the Idda period and this. So in conclusion, thus the act secures the Muslim woman to have sufficient means to live her life with dignity even after divorce. So that's it. Thank you.